Hey, I'm uh, Tzvi Schreiber from uh, Freitos, and I want to tell you a little bit about technology for logistics, and um, also a little bit uh, related to what Ami just spoke about, talk about what, what's it like to disrupt and digitize a, a big a traditional um, industry. So um, global trade has really um, <clears throat> mushroomed in the last decades, uh, reaching $19 trillion worth of goods. And this is a, a major factor which both impacts the choice we have as consumers in the West and, and also creates uh, at least a billion jobs in Asia and elsewhere. So it's a big part of the world. And, and believe it or not, logistics in the US is 8.5% of the whole economy. And in China, it's even more. It's almost uh, close to 20% of the Chinese economy is logistics. So this is really a very, very big part um, of the world economy. It's amazingly behind. You would not believe how manual this industry is. Uh, we deal mostly with ocean and air. In air, it's, it's maybe the most dramatic uh, change, uh, sort of difference between passenger travel, which, believe it or not, started digitization in the 60s. In the 60s, there was a company called Sabre who created a system where travel agents could access airlines and book a passenger onto a seat electronically in the 60s. And, and still now, till last year, was the very first uh, digital transaction that we did with Lufthansa to book cargo onto the lower deck. So the technology for the lower deck is, is 50 uh, years at least behind the upper deck. Uh, and only now, uh, with the work that we're doing at Freitos and others, are we finally uh, digitizing that. Um, this is just an inter interesting example to show you how manual the um, industry is, but also to track how it's improving. Uh, once a year, Freitos does a very simple survey. We have a, a fake company, and we write, uh, we, we go to the websites of 20 top freight forwarders, and we say, we would like a price quote to ship a container from China to America. Um, and as you can imagine, shipping containers from China to America happens thousands of times every day, and yet, uh, believe it or not, it's still an incredibly manual process. And on average, this was the first year that it was a little bit better, but till last year, the average was more than three days to get a simple price quote on the world's busiest trade lane. Um, but the worst quote of all, actually from a, from a big company, from UPS, uh, logistics arm, UPS supply chain, we got this quote for a simple China-US after 31 days. So this is in an age where we all expect everything within seconds on our smartphone, and this industry is still talking about days or sometimes up to a month for, for simple information. And that's what we're finally starting to change. So you can imagine that the vision of Freitas was simple. The execution was very complicated, but the vision was to have like Expedia or Booking.com for international freight. You go to a website, you say, I've got a container in China, or I want it in Israel, I want it in London, I want it in Chicago. Uh, and you get price quotes, and you compare, and you book and pay online. So it's just like um, what we've had for 20 years in passenger travel, like Expedia, like Booking.com, but it's for international freight, for cargo. Uh, and that's what we've built. But it was very, very complicated because the data, when, when like I said, in passenger travel, they were digitizing since the 60s. So if you want to compete with Expedia, you just buy a subscription to Sabre or Amadeus, and you have all the data from all the airlines, but in freight, there's no such thing. So we had to build that first. We had to build the, the data pipeline for the industry. Um, and so we spent the first, we're now seven years into Freitas, and the first five, four or five years, we just worked with the log logistics service providers, and we sold them software to digitize, to, to automate their price quotes. And only after we'd uh, achieved that, then uh, two years ago, we launched our actual marketplace where the shippers, in other words, the importers and exporters, can connect digitally and compare prices. So we are now the leading marketplace for international shipping, air and ocean. We're also, um, of course, using the data that we have. So we have now launched the leading in partnership with the Baltic um, 
exchange in London, we've launched the leading index for tracking the prices of shipping, which actually change every day. Container shipping is a, a volatile industry. So just a few um, maybe thoughts on how do you change a big offline uh, industry. We're talking about a, an industry which is still very much about relationships, golfs, uh, dinners, and we have to convince people who've done it this way for decades to, to move to a website. Um, there's an incredible amount of data with no data standardization. We've had to deal um, at Freitos with a couple of hundred thousand different Excel sheets from around the world with no standard, uh, different languages, different formats. Um, and the industry doesn't necessarily know what, it's, what it wants. This is a reference to Henry Ford's old uh, joke that people didn't know they wanted a car. They thought they wanted a faster horse. Um, so looking back now on the first seven years of Freitos, um, I just came to nine different conclusions about what it's like to digitize a big, complex, conservative industry, and I'll share them with you really quickly. Um, first, you have to embrace the data complexity. There's no point crying about the fact that there's no APIs and there's no data standards. You just have to do the hard work. And uh, this is already out of date. We've got almost 200,000 Excels, which we've read in in a semi-automated way. People, technology, scripts. Um, secondly, we became very vocal, um, very vocal in measuring the industry. We publish a lot of research to say, look, guys, it takes you three days to do a price quote. That's ridiculous. People are not going to stand for that in this day and age. And so we became very confident um, at doing this survey and telling the industry what's wrong and what needs to be fixed. And, and following up on the surveys, we do a lot of market education, a lot of talks, a lot of research. And we've just become more and more self-confident, even though we're not even from the industry, we've become confident to tell the industry what it needs to do. Um, the software, uh, I, I used to say that we're practically giving it away. We need the, uh, the providers to automate their price quotes, otherwise we can't do a marketplace. So for a long time we sold them software fairly cheaply, and then we said, you know what, it's not worth the effort. We've started this year to give software away for free because we just need the service providers to be automated in order that we can do a marketplace. Um, of course, even within an industry which is conservative, there's 100,000 freight forwarders in the world, so there are always going to be some who are relatively early adopters, and we worked very hard to find those. Um, bringing, of course, the consumer experience into freight. So we have beautiful websites and, and a beautiful user experience, and we've been able to get a, an NPS score um, in, freight, for, in a freight of over 60, which is similar to Google or Amazon. It's absolutely unheard of in this industry. The typical freight forwarder is lucky to have an NPS score of zero. So we're really bringing in a customer experience which up to now has only been seen in the consumer world. Uh, big, complex industry, so you need a big, complex team. I mean, I, I find it hard to believe sometimes, but we have uh, over 200 people, even though we're a startup in seven offices. Uh, around the world. And then, of course, you need to have the right investors. You've got to match the investors to the kind of business. Um, some investors are looking for a quick return. They're not going to enjoy being investors in Freitos. Uh, but we were very lucky to find both some corporate investors, like the Singapore Stock Exchange and GE, and some great local um, VC firms, like Aleph and ICV, who are willing to take a long-term view and wait out multiple years as we digitize this industry. And of course, the whole thing, it's almost like a cliche, but it's very, very true. You need a team who's ready for the long haul, a team who's going to be willing to, to wait many years, probably at least a decade in total, uh, till an exit. So that's it. I'm uh, Tzvi Schreiber from Freitos. I'm around if anyone's got any questions. Thank you very much.